So I'm over here practicing my Elmsley counts. We'll be needing those today for the subject matter. Oh, I look up at the clock and <clears throat> let me get my glasses on here. It's, it's time to start the show. Hey, salutations to the kindred spirits and welcome to this rain check live stream. Normally I go live on the Wednesdays. There was one face up if you were, doesn't matter yet. We'll get to this in a moment. Normally, I'm live on Wednesdays. I said, can't do it Wednesday. I was busy. Uh, here's what I was doing. I'm getting ready for uh, this shindig. Going down the Smoky Mountains. This is the Winter Carnival of Magic coming up. You got 12 days to make the decision and 20 hours to be there. I've uh, showcased this thing a few times. Look at, look at the dealers who are going to be there. Daytona, Smoky Mountain, Smoky Mountain Magic. We love them. Anthony Gerard, Trick Supply. Be good to see Wolfgang. Mike Hummer, A to Z. Don, Magic and Books. Cool. Take one more look at the talent. And, you know, even if you don't come for the convention, maybe just get a ticket to the show. Look who you'll get to see. The Evansons, the Evisons, Steve Valentine, Bob Sheets, Jaffo. Andy Gladwin, and man, I can't wait to see Nick Defot in action. So part of my job at this uh, soiree will be deliver to deliver some information to the kindred spirits, give a little Doug Khan learning experience, and uh, I'm calling my current lecture Advice from a Con Man. So we talk about street performing and social media magic and a few cool tricks. These are the notes that I was preparing. They have successfully been sent to the printer on Wednesday. And uh, yeah, we'll have those at the Winter Carnival of Magic and happy to have that done. In other news, I have mastered the art of procrastination. So go team. All right, we're rolling, Ed. How you doing today? What's up, Tim? Good to see you at uh, 2 p.m. where I'm at. Greetings to wherever you are. It's a little earlier than I normally do these things. So you see guys or gals like Jan or Jan or Jan. And how am I? Uh, you know, I'm me, <laughs> Doug Khan, riding my wave. Generally, I'm pretty good. What's up, Alex? Always good to see you. Watching on the bus on the way home. That's a trooper. Yeah, the con theory section is, is pretty brief. But the new notes are all theory. The tricks are all in videos on QR codes at the end of the book. What's up, Brother Gary? Hope everyone is doing well in your universe. Speaking of procrastinating, I didn't quite get things together, but that was somewhat on purpose. I know some guy, sometimes y'all like to take a peek into my uh, professional lifestyle. Here's my bag of tricks. This is a catalog case. You might recognize some of the sticker swag. Um, and here's my real bag of tricks. This is what I wheel around. You know, it's got wheels on it. I got a couple bags and a couple other things in here. But this is the close-up bag. And inside this thing, I have some working material. I want to share. I want to share one of these uh, pieces with you today. Let's get a zoomy zoom on this situation. Adonis is here. What's happening? Yeah, once I get back from uh, the convention, the stock that I have left over will go on, on sale at the shop. I'm happy to note that I do have some more of the, the Trick Traveler gaps in. Dustin Thomas is making these. If I have any left, those will be available again. This will be a couple weeks away. I'm deb debuting Khan's Cash. We had these printed upside down. This is a money, a utility device using some bucks. So we're deb debuting this, and I hope to have some of these on the site as well. You can look for that stuff mid-March. But maybe I'll do well and sell everything out. We don't know. It's not like I'm, um, uh... Stefan, where you been? Dude, come on down to the Winter Carnival, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. And then you'll be the only 10 I'll see for sure, my, except for my fine wife. You know, Aaron's going to come with me to this one. What's up, Yvonne? Good to see you. 
Hey, Mike. Hello, hello. Yeah, y'all come down. We're going to throw a party. At, uh, and uh, this is going to be a great convention. If nothing else, uh, Bob Sheets is going to be there. That's all we need to know, Bob Sheets. Sponge Bunnies, D-Lights, couple trick decks, couple regular decks, card to wallet, dice, color changing knives, couple other decks, backup gaff cards, eight ball, eight ball, chop cup, load ball, thumb tip, magic wand, sponge balls, and handkerchiefs for the Slidini Knot Routine. That's what's in this bag. This, by the way, is a TCC uh, close-up case. It's imperfect, but serviceable. That's my review. It's, well, gets the job done. So when I go to gigs, when, when I go to gigs, uh, how much is it? Look, I'm going to put this thing back up here. I blinked it off already. Look, I'm, let me. So, Winter Carnival of Magic, it might be 200 bucks. It's for three days of magic. You know, you go to a Broadway show, you pay 200 bucks. There'll be a Broadway show. The country theater, country tonight theater is where it's going to be. Then you get several learning experiences, close up theater, and then you get to hang out with me, you know, and, and maybe Stefan if he makes the drive. These are the packet tricks I keep with me. Hey, <laughs> Stefan, we're talking about packet tricks today. Man, I just left my, my friend is leaving the stream. It's a prediction, it's a mentalism prediction as I pull out the, the packet carriers. Ah, all right. He's making excuses. Notice the excuses came out after the packet tricks arrived. Uh, these are my backups. I keep those in my bag of tricks because, you know, you keep your backups in there, right? Uh, this is the sympathetic cards. I've done this trick. It is the first packet trick I really learned when I was like 15. I've done it my whole life. I keep, I keep this in my bag for a number of reasons. It would be the third packet trick I would go to. The first packet trick I would go to would be this one, which is this routine, plastic surgery, plastic lady is the finale, and my routine is part of this package. I will also have these at the convention and also hopefully subsequently on the conjure.com website, conjure.com for your magical needs. That's the trick I love and use, and it's really the only packet trick I do when I'm, you know, working. But occasionally, occasionally, I will do this gem by Jim Swain. But what we're going to do today is go down the rabbit hole and find out what are the origins of Jim Swain and his capitulating queens, which you guys may have seen me do before. But I'm going to talk about it a little bit in depth today, and let's get started now. <clears throat> now, like all good magic, this trick begins with a live spectator making a choice. And in this one, they get to choose one of the queens. Now, since you're there and I'm here, I'm just going to choose the queen of hearts for us. Hearts symbolizing the likes you'll give this stream. Hope everyone hits the thumbs up. Let the algorithm know we're working hard for your entertainment pleasure. And uh, regardless of what the spectator chooses, when you go through the packet of cards, you'll discover one of the cards is a little different than the rest, and it will be the card the spectator chose, in this case, the Queen of Hearts. So that's fine if they, they say the Queen of Hearts, but what if, what if say, you know, what if someone was to say the Queen of Diamonds? This is better, actually, because the Queen of Diamonds reveals the turquoise blue Glamour Nugget back design. It's a more striking exhibition for the effect at hand. The trick also does work with the Black Queens, the Queen of Clubs, for example. Not quite as striking, but a classic blue rider back design as the Queen of Clubs makes her appearance. And I say it works with any card. It's actually not true. The, the um, Say, for example, if you had named the Queen of Spades, well, because it has the red back already, I would have to alter the... I'd have to alter the collection, so it, we'll do it this way. I'll make the other cards blue, and then the only red back card will be the odd backed queen of spades, and and that's how that works. If you choose that one, a lot of times people don't know what to choose. If you're like me, you're fickle and you don't know where to go, and you just do a little snappy roo. You can make each one different. Doesn't get any more different than that. That's our effect in question. 
Jim Swain's Capitulating Queens. And uh, you know what? You know what I'd like to do here before I before I talk more about this. I would like to recommend everyone that likes what they just saw, and I hope you do. Yvonne does. Thanks, Yvonne. Uh, if you're interested in adding this trick to your re re repertoire, you would visit Mayor Yedid's magic site, my mymagic.com. He has the rights and and uh, commercially uh, makes com can't say words good. Go there and buy Capitulating Queens. Alternatively, if you can find Jim's book, Don't Blink, which was his first book, the routine's in there. Some of his videos have the routine on there as well, but that's what you're looking for, Capitulating Queens. You could spend 20 bucks on a lot of tricks in this day and age. I don't think you'll spend 20 bucks and be happier five years from now than you would be if you chose to add this. And I've got no skin in the game sending you over there to Marietta's site. I just, you know, I think you got cool stuff you might like. All right, to do, to do that trick, you're going to need the Elmsley count. Man, anytime I can open this book and point my finger at this man, I like to. This is Alex Elmsley. He's a genius. Alex Elmsley had a bit of a bit of a mathematics side to him. He had some. Uh, he was a computer guy, and he has lots of mathematical applications. He's got lots of applications for lots of stuff. But the thing that he created that changed the world was the oh, automatic producer. If you know, you know. That's actually in my notes. The four card trick. This is where he introduced what Elmsley called the ghost count, but the, the Elmsley count. And if you've been around this stream, you probably know what an Elmsley count is. I'm not going to spend a lot of time today on that subject, but I do like to point people towards the best information to get the, the stuff, you know, get the information you need. Stephen Minch describing classic Elmsley techniques. The Elmsley count at its heart hides the third card from the top as you count the cards from hand to hand. So it looks like you count four cards, but you're actually just counting three and hiding one of the four. I'm going to ex explain this one time briefly and again encourage the student to visit the collected works of Alex Elmsley as penned by Stephen Minch. The cards third from the top face up in this four-card packet begins in my dealing grip in my left hand in my case. The thumb starts the count by breaking away the top card slightly. It moves it off the packet. This is going to make removing a single card easy, which is integral to this count. So we break it away, use the four fingertip to kind of break everything else and move that card slightly. The uh, other hand pinches at the right uh, long sides at the top as the first card is peeled. After the first card is peeled, the right hand gets busy by pushing over these top two cards as one. That will include the face-up card below the top card. So keep everything square and just pinch and push, and those two will go over. You're going to need that to happen because we're about to peel those two into this hand. And as that happens, this card is going to be replaced at the face of the packet that it just came from. So we've counted the first card. We're going back for the second. This card is replaced below and pinched, and then we pull the double off the top. That's the action of the Elmsley count. That's count number three. That's count number four. And that's how we conceal the third card from the top using the Elmsley count mechanics. Briefly again, pull one, pinch two, replace the one at the face as you pull the two from the top, and three and four. That's your two-minute Elmsley count lesson. And if you need more than that, I've done a whole history lesson on Elmsley when I first got started on these YouTubes. You can go check that out if you need more information than that. And I need to get that out of the way because the tutorial we're going to do today is very similar to the trick that you just witnessed. It is the forefather to the capitulating queens routine. And this trick we're going to look at, let me put my queens up before I get lost. This trick we're going to look at is uh, an invention. Why well, I was so happy, so happy to see that this was a creation of Martin Gardner. I'm holding this book up because this was my introduction to Martin Gardner.
back when I was a kid and had to get all my magic books from the library. This was one that had good stuff in it. You can imagine being a kid in, in, in the middle school at my age. It's not like we had the resources that kids do today. So I would have like bad Bill Severn books and such. Uh, this this book has been with me a while. You can tell it's been around, but I, I've returned to this book over and over again. There's card tricks. There's topological vanishes. There's like rope tricks in here. There's, uh, you know, there's, there's the Afghan bands, minimalism. But did I say topological mysteries? Like, ooh, this stuff here, so cool. This was penned in the 60s, if I'm not mistaken. This is Martin Gardner basically known as a math guy. And uh, let me mention this. Right now, as we speak going on, I'll, I'll pop this website up for you to look at, is the gathering for Gardner. This is a congress of people with like-minded minds, puzzles, games, mathematics. This is a gathering to celebrate the spirit of Martin Gardner. And this is something that they've done while Martin was alive. This has been going on. I'm, I'm not like an expert on the gathering for Gardner, but I would encourage you to go to this site, gathering for Gardner. You'll learn about Martin, Martin Gardner, who, by the way, penned one of the most important books on magic. It's at, uh, the Encyclopedia of Impromptu Magic. Could maybe watch this video and learn more about this genius. But this, this Congress is happening now. And I think they're in Atlanta this week. And look who's there. Kindred spirit Robert Vallon, listed as the secretary. He's a mathematics professor at Lamar University. Robert's a magician and a uh, member of the channel and kindred spirit. We've crossed paths with a few times. And yeah, if you like mathematics, puzzles, and uh, things of this nature, I'm going to encourage you to go take a look at the uh, gathering for Gardner and go learn a little bit more about some of the people that have paved the way to moments that are uh, are here. Actually, you know what? I did have, <laughs> I did want to do one giveaway attempt. So is there any giveaways? Let's find out right now. I'm going to take a visit over to my YouTube channel. I tried to gift some memberships last time I was streaming and, and failed miserably, but I might be able to do that now. <clears throat> so let me visit. Um, instead of sharing my stream like I did last time, I'm just going to go to it and see if I can get I'm watching me. Watch you watch me. How fun is that? Let's mute me so I can see. Uh, yeah, there's the gifting option. Membership. Membership gifting. I have 10 memberships. Um, let's gift five. Look, we're doing it. It's happening live. We have just gifted five memberships live on the stream. And to answer your question, yes, there is a giveaway today. There you go, right in the chat. We worked it out. Those gifts will go to kindred spirits who are active on the channel, who comment favorably on the videos and, you know, participate and make the algorithm overall happy. Randall, you should win. You should definitely be winning. Ah, perhaps you're not opted in. You do have to be opted in to receiving gifted memberships. I'm going to leave it to the viewer to figure that out. And on my next stream, I'll gift five more. I think you're automatically op opted in, but there's a small chance you'd be opted out. So anyway, there, we did that. Giveaway. All right, we're going down the rabbit hole now. I've told you all about this book before. The Ibidum from Howard Lyons. This is volume two of three. This is the collected works. Howard Lyons wrote this zine in the early 50s. Uh, we're going into late 50s, 59 here as we find this trick right here by a man named Martin Gardner. The trick in question is all the non-conformists. 
All the nonconformists. It's kind of a modern classic. There's been a few handlings of this that have gained popularity. Mike Skinner, I think, is the one who was responsible for putting this effect on the map. Mike Skinner, oh, classic Vegas close-up artist. You can find clips of maybe Micah Marr performing his rendition of this. I have some interesting thoughts on the handling of all the non-con formists. I'm going to spell it with two N's if anyone likes this handling. Say it that way. All the non-con formists. And yeah, let's take a look at how that might look like. Let me get all the things cleared out of the way. I don't want to confuse the viewers. All right, this trick, I'm going to kind of be making this up as I go, right? Because this is not actively part of my working repertoire, but, you know, I'll just, I'm pretty good at faking it. I learned from, I learned from my wife. The moms and dads, if the children get the jokes, it is not my fault. I did not go to Blackpool. Negative. It's on the list still. Four cards, nothing more, nothing less. These are single pasteboards. There's no trap doors or magnets. There's no rough and smooth or like, you know, any, they're not gaff cards. So to do this, what you're about to see, you'll just need four cards, four cards. That's it. All right. And then you ask your spectator to participate. They name any card at all, any card at all. Again, you're you're there and I'm here. So I'm going to have to make this choice for you. Let me do this. I will hypnotize you. I think hypnotizing is a good plot for this. I'll hypnotize you into thinking Ace of Spades. And if that's the card you were thinking of, well, congratulations. There is one card that is a little unique from the other red back cards. And if you were thinking Ace of Spades, then we nailed it. Now, I've done card tricks for a while, and I'll tell you what will happen when you do these things. You'll have people say, hey, Mr. Magician, I didn't think Ace of Spades. I was thinking Ace of Clubs. Well, this is where you need to use a little magic, and you can change that Ace of Spades into the Ace of Clubs. And it actually works It actually works with any card at all, even, even the red ones. Let's, uh, let's, we'll do the Ace of Hearts, again, symbolizing the likes. Easy to hit the thumbs up button. For the Ace of Hearts, we send the packet through the multiverse. Yeah, emerging out the wormhole in the opposite sphere. The opposite sphere? What is that? I don't even, there's probably words I could use better here. But that is the Ace of Hearts. The only, of course, as soon as you show that the Ace of Hearts is the only red card, that person's going to say, I thought the Ace of Diamonds, and you just say, no problem. It's all based on hypnotism. I'm able to show you what I want you to see. And like, if I want you to think this packet of cards is red, well, you'll think this packet of cards is red. We need a displacement here. Or if I, if I want you to think the packet of cards is black, you'll think the packet of cards is black. We could even go 50-50 and have one of each. And here's where I propose going beyond that and not even focusing on the backs, but focusing on the faces. Watch, not, let's, let's use the uh, Ace, of Claw, Ace of Spades. This is a, it's got the big pip. It's easier to follow. See if you can tell when the Ace of Spades jumps to the top. Did you see it go? Not there, but here. What? That's the ace of spades. That's the ace of clubs. Those are the black aces. Those are the red aces. And uh, that's magic. Ta-da. This is what we do. When we don't know what to do, this is your hot tip today. Here's the, here's the real tutorial. When you're not sure what to do, just put your hands up and say, ta-da. Holy cow, hell fro hell's froze over. Stefan Barksdale said my packet trick was good. 
recording this. I'm going to post this in, on shorts. So yeah, for here's let me tell you this theory. I have surmised that a magician, a card magician, only needs four cards to convey at least the majority of magical effects. You can do productions, vanishes, reversals. You can do uh, revelations, selections, and discoveries, uh, duplication, multiplication, and uh, penetration. Yes, you can do that. All of those can be done with just four cards. A lot of those effects you just saw with these four. And if you're just if you're just going to carry four, well, the four you carry could be two red cards and two <laughs> two black cards. I know it's hard to face the truth, but we get there eventually. So look, I'm going to walk through the handling. If you know the Elmsley count, and if you can do a simple double lift, maybe you'll enjoy putting this in your repertoire. And if nothing else, maybe you'll be inspired to consider cracking open some of the old magic texts and seeing how relevant some of the lessons the masters taught us 60 years ago are still relevant today. So the cards start face up. You let the spectators know there's only four. You get the cards together in pairs and whichever one they name needs to be second from the top. Um, from the face down packet. So they name a card second from the top face down packet. So I want to get, if they name the ace of spades, as I'm putting this packet together, I put the ace of spades second from the top of the face down packet and I want its mate next to it. So in this case, the red aces will be on top and the bottom. If they'd said the ace of hearts, it would be this situation with the two red aces in the middle and the ace of hearts second from the top of the face down packet. That's going to place the first card legitimately in position to be the one they name to reveal during the count. So four cards, yada, yada, name any one. And as we gathered them, the ace of spades goes into the name position, turn the packet face down and execute an Elmsley count. As you do so, in jog the third and the fourth cards so that you can gently out jog the odd back card that comes into view. So we're just not showing this second card during the Elmsley count. You can risk turn here and show it this way. That works. Uh, this is not in the original handling, but I like to push this forward a little bit so that I can remove and show this cleanly. This provides just a little bit of a lip so that I know it's going back here. You need to put it back where it came from. So remove and show, put it back where it came from. And now this is kind of like in the original Elmsley four card trick. We're going to use the Elmsley count as a switch. So Elmsley count. And now we're in phase two where the spectator says, what if I'd said clubs? Well, we could do clubs. That's how that works. Continuing the routine, the ace of clubs is turned face down atop the packet. Here's your situation check. Don't show that to your spectators. Just turn it down. And then turn the packet face up and you say, yeah, it works with red ones too. Which red one do you want? Whichever red one they name, if they want diamonds, we put that in the second position. Just repeating the first phase is what you do. So repeat the first phase, Elm Elmsley count, out jogging the card, in jogging these two, out jogging this one, showing it's the odd card is the one they named. Put it back where it came from. Execute another Elmsley count this time out jogging the card, and this will be the second selection. The other red ace. Now this, uh, I, I did say there was just the Elmsley count in the double lift. There's one other move we're going to do here, and that's this, this thing. This is the frustration count by Brother John Hammond. This is hardly a move. This kind of just works itself. And I'm doing a little bit of an enhanced version here by using an extra back. So to do the frustration sequence, you'll have one odd backer on top and the bottom. Just arrange them that way. Peel the top card off and flash its back and then flash the back in the other hand. Now we're going to allow the card in the left hand to fall to a dealing grip and then continue the frustration count, which is flashing the back and peeling off the face. Flash the back, peel off the face. 
flash the back, peel off the face, flash the back, peel off the face, flash the back, peel off the face. You do all that together and it looks like you got, you know, four black cards. You'll need to displace one of the cards to bring the red card into view. And now we can do this. This is a bit different. We're going to peel the first card off the back of the packet and then it's the same. So I show a red card at the back, peel the card off the back, and then go into this procedure. You just have to do one displacement after the initial show. So the first one is this, one, two, three, four red cards. And now to make the next show happen, you have to say, yeah, but they don't have to be red. So I displace the card from the face to the, from the back to the face. And I say they could also be black. Now I peel off the back of the packet. So it's flash, peel off the back, flash, and then go into this frustration count handling. And then you say it could even be 50-50, turning the packet face down and spreading to display the true condition of uh, one of each. To your spectators, it's still magic because you're just continuing the effect. And then we're going to wrap this up with a oddity of Doc Daly's last trick in a Technicolor format. So this shouldn't work, but I think it does. And here's how you'll get into Doc Daly's last trick, that two-card transposition. As you coalesce the packet, I like to end jog here so that I can obtain a little break in preparation for a double lift. So I have my little pinky there just holding a separation. We're going to make my $2,000 camera focus. There it is. So again, as I wiggle here, as they come together, I just in jog. And as I square, I get that break. Now you could just lift this way. This is an acceptable double lift for this moment, actually. You do this, square, and just lift here. Did I do a triple that time? Regardless, it's squiggle, square. You can just say, look, I'm going to put the ace of spades on the table. And now we reverse count one, two, three. And as I reverse count, I hold a break for another double lift. So I'm showing two is one, putting the two down and then dealing the top card to the table. And that affects the the transposition. I felt like that was somewhat unclear. Let me very briefly walk through it again. So the cards are the, the, the cards are in this position, red, black, black, red, squiggle, in jog, hold the break, do your double lift. I'll do this one usually, the Vernon with a turnover. So I'll do this. I'll say, watch the ace of spades. I'll put it on the table. We'll use the other, we reverse count. I'll use the other red ace, another double lift. This is the Die Vernon double lift. I've taught this elsewhere on the channel. Hocus Pocus, chicken bones choke us. Thank you, David Williamson. It's the black ones, there's the red ones. And that's what, a couple of 10 effects that you can bust out. Just put four cards in your wallet. Your spectator gets to have the mental selection. The cards transform, the cards transpose. And if you wanted to have some reversals in this, I'm thinking there's room for you to make that happen as well. <clears throat> That's all I have to say about that. All the nonconformist, it's in the books. I'll open the galley to questions, comments, constructive criticism. If you have any thoughts on the plot, I'm all ears as well. Not just now, but post stream. So if you're watching the replay later, you got a thought on how to make this trick better than what I just did. A lot of this is new for me, this uh, all the nonconformist. I've never really performed that version. I've always done the capitulating queens. I learned the Jim Swain routine about 25 years ago. What's up, Yitz? Ralph? Ira, I've seen you around. I don't think I've said hi yet, but look. What's up, Ira? Good to see you, man. Go. Take care of your lovely bride. I'm right behind you. My daughter's getting married tomorrow, so I'm going to shift gears into dad mode soon. Daughter number two, Caitlin Arlene Kahn. We'll have a new name tomorrow. LeBlanc. She's joining the Cajuns. 
We're excited to go do that tomorrow. I'll be I'll be uh, playing the role of father and cameraman. I'm excited to go do all of that. Nick, we're done. You didn't, you're too late anyway. Catch the replay. We covered some good things, I think. Yeah, right? Good vibes. Should be a fun time tomorrow. But I've got shirts to press, socks to pick, shoes to shine, and i got to put all these cameras, get them off the desk, and pack them up in a thingamajig. And so, yeah, I'm going to go do that. Thanks for spending some time with me, y'all. Got the live stream in this week. Happy to have that done. Hope some of this information sits well in your gray matter. I will be back next week. I had originally planned this stream to be self-working coin magic, and I'm thinking next week we cover that topic. It's a kind of an interest one. Self-working coin magic. Let's pencil that in for next Wednesday at 4. I'll see you then. It'll be ciao for now. Au revoir.